Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on the best of Oklahoma gardening, we have an entire show filled to the brim with great plants to add to your garden. Host Casey Hinches showcases a kaleidoscope of annuals, perennials, shrubs, trees, Oklahoma proven plants, and all America selections. There are so many that you will be spoiled for choice to try and decide how many of these great plants you can fit in your landscape. Have another Oklahoma proven and this is a perennial so that means it'll come back year after year. Now it blooms pretty early. This is called Helleborus or also commonly called Linton Rose or sometimes known as Christmas Rose and that's because it can bloom anywhere from Christmas all the way into Easter. You can see it has this particular one has beautiful blush colored flowers but the flowers can vary anywhere from a green to a cream into purples and reds as well. There's also a few yellow varieties out there. More and more cultivars are being selected for having an upright flower to kind of show off a little bit more. But this is one that's gonna bloom early in your garden before anything else is blooming. Now, prior to blooming, you're gonna have evergreen foliage that you're gonna see in your garden through those winter months. And this is one low maintenance perennial that you wanna to add to your shade garden because really the only maintenance that it requires is coming back through and cleaning out some of this dead foliage or the older foliage and just cleaning that up to give it a nicer appearance. This is gonna have a lovely bouquet of flowers in the center here. And then once this is done, they're going to potentially seed even more plants for you throughout the season. Hellebore is a great perennial to add to any woodland or shade garden. OSU's campus today and joining us is Holly Passmore who is a horticulturist for Landscape Services and Holly is responsible for all the annual color that we see on campus. You you grow it and you plant it and and make sure that it looks good and I got to tell you it looks beautiful this season. Well thank you. So this is one of your combinations that we've got here. Tell us a little bit about what we're looking at. I just I love the color combination and the different varieties of plants you've incorporated. Well, this is actually a mix of three different plants. So we've got our verbena, mm -hmm. peachy keen, and we've got our petunias, honey, and then we've got our calibrachoa, coralina. Okay. So what was the reasoning for doing a mix of different flowers in here? Other than it's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so every year when we decide our color scheme for campus, mm -hmm. We pick one plant, which I'll show you here in a minute. Okay. And we build everything off of that color scheme. Okay. So everything you see will be in that color color realm. All right, so it looks like you kind of went with a coral orange look this season, maybe? Yeah. All right, all right. Well, I love the combination, and let's go take a look at some of those other inspiring plants. Okay. So Casey, here we are in the formal garden, mm -hmm. and this is our inspiration plant that we based all the color around. This uh, periwinkle here? Yes, this is Vinca papaya, and it's in the tattoo series. Okay, which is a fairly new series, and I think there's a couple of different color versions of it, is that correct? Yes, I, I think there's about four different colors. Okay, all right. Well, I love, they, most of them have a real dark eye to them, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems to be doing really well here. Yes. 
So you can see you've pulled the pink into the petunia there a little bit, and there's another plant behind us that's catching my eye a little bit too. Uh, yes. Is this the, a portulaca? Yes, right here. This is the portulaca. It's the color blast double orange. Okay. Um, it's a self-cleaning portulaca. It says six to eight inches, and we're getting well over about a foot on ours. Yeah, it definitely has more height than the kind of prostrate uh, spreading habit than a, a lot of portulacas yes. have. Um, and you can see it's starting to clean itself a little bit now. Yes, it's cleaning itself right now. So, and the other cool thing about this portulaca is it won't close up in the sun like your regular portulacas. Okay. So Holly, all of these that we're looking at are annuals, which means they should bloom throughout the whole season. Is that correct? That's right. All right. And then uh, what about maintenance? I assume we all are busy on campus. Do we you have are. to deadhead all of this stuff or is it mostly self-cleaning? Yeah. Everything out here is self-cleaning. We don't have to spend any time deadheading. Okay. All right. Well, and you've got a coleus you want to show us too? Yeah. Okay. So this definitely is a different looking coleus than what we're used to seeing. And it's in full sun. <laughs> yes. So this is the coleus fancy feathers copper. Okay. Um, it's, this is the mature height. So about eight inches and it has a really nice spread on it, about 12 to 14 inches. So it almost could serve as kind of an annual ground cover Yeah. Uh, in the sun. Yeah. So, so it's got very fine textured foliage to it. Mm -hmm. um, and is this the typical color we would find in the sun or so this is the typical color that you're going to find in the sun okay and this particular coleus can go in the sun or the shade oh really so in the shade it drops some of this um red color mm -hmm. and it picks up more of a chartreuse color and a lighter red color okay so even in the shade it's going to kind of highlight that darker area a little bit yes. with that chartreuse color excellent well it's a very nice coleus i like how y'all have used it here thanks so holly you've got a little annual in here that's tucked in that i want to ask you about what is this giant pom-pom flower so this is actually a gomfrina really? or a globe amaranth um not the typical globe amaranth that you see it's almost like four times the size of, yes yeah Yes, and this is, it'll get a little bit taller, probably 10 to 18 inches tall is all you're gonna get. Okay. And it'll spread out a little bit more. Okay, so were these just recently planted or are they? Yes, these okay. were recently planted. All right, and do they come in the white or just the pink, do you know? Just the pink, this is actually a pink zazzle. Okay. Right. And as far as I know, that's the only cultivar. All right, well again, you've got it combined with your petunias and your tattoo vincas and uh, looks like we've got a, a few other plants in here and some ornamental grasses. Yeah, so we've got our gomfrina and we've also got our regular purple fountain grass in this bed. And there's one other that I want to show you. Okay, excellent. So this is another fountain grass that we have on campus. And it looks really similar to the one we saw in the formal garden. But this is the mature height on it. Oh, okay. It's going to be about 18 to 30 inches. The leaf blades are just a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. And it's more suited for container gardening. So what is the variety of, the, it's a purple fountain grass, but it's a particular variety? Yes, this is purple fountain grass, red riding hood. Red riding hood, okay. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you've got it underplanted again with your vinca, the tattoo papaya vinca. Yes, and then further down Legacy Walk, we've got it paired with the Caliber Coa Hula Orange. Oh, okay, fantastic. Holly, thank you so much for showing us all of these fantastic annuals that you guys are using here on OSU's campus. And I would encourage all of our viewers to come down and take advantage of these quieter days when the students are away during the summertime and take a look around at the landscape to get ideas for your backyard. We've got another native Oklahoma proven plant we want to introduce you to and this one is called Rudbeckia maxima and I think you can see how it got its common name giant coneflower as it gets to be a height of about five to six feet tall with these gorgeous yellow and of course black heads on them. 
This native is more often seen on the eastern side of the state, but can be well established in any garden in Oklahoma as it's hardy from zones four to eight. Now it'll start out with some lower basal growth, but through the spring and into early summer, it's gonna shoot up with these giant flowers as it blooms in early summertime. You can deadhead these flowers back to get a second flush that will come on. When it's not blooming, it has a lovely blue-green foliage that it adds to the garden, as well as the vertical element that it establishes in your landscape design. For best effect, you're going to want to plant this perennial in a mass. We're here with Arizona Cypress, another Oklahoma proven tree that we want to introduce to you. Now this tree is a native to southwestern U.S. and so therefore you might guess that it can thrive in our hot dry conditions and it also prefers a well drained soil. Typically the thing that you might notice first of all is the foliage on it and it has this beautiful gray green almost into a blue color foliage. There is a popular cultivar called Cook's Peak which was discovered in Cook's Peak, New Mexico. And it has a bit more of a silvery bluish foliage to it and a bit more of a pyramidal form to the overall shape of the tree. There's also some cultivars that are becoming more popular that have a bit more of a yellow foliage to them. Typically, Arizona cypress get about 20 to 25 feet tall with about a 15 foot spread. Also, as Arizona cypress get a bit older, you'll start to see more of the exfoliating bark on the trunk of the tree, revealing orange and green. For the past several weeks, we've highlighted some of the All-America selection winners that we've had displayed in our gardens. Today, we want to conclude our, our highlights with the annuals that we've had out here. First one I want to talk about is a celosia. This one's called Asian Garden. It's a really nice celosia. And you know, you really can't go wrong with celosias. I think they're awesome plants. They're really hardy annuals. Uh, this particular one uh, grows about 30 to 40 inches high and it has beautiful bright pink flowers on it. And you can see as it starts to develop, as the, the spikes are developing, they'll continue to grow and continue to uh, elongate and continue that bright pink out at the tips. Now as with all celosias, or most of them anyway, they are very hardy plants. They are drought and heat resistant. Um, these are good clean plants, no, you know, no problems that uh, we're aware of. They also make great cut flowers, both fresh as well as dried. Our next annual is a marigold. And uh, this is a real, I've been really impressed with this one. It's a beautiful plant. This is called the Big Duck. Um, it actually has three colors. There's a gold and a yellow and an orange in the series. Um, these are nice, robust plants, uh, nice, uh, nice and compact though, they're well branched, um, but they have these fully double large flowers, uh, three to four inches across. So they really provide nice impact, you know, in the garden. Uh, because of their nice, neat, uh, compact habit, um, you can grow them in containers uh, in, in the garden beds, um, but it also makes, a, you can also create a nice little neat mini hedge out of them as well. South Pacific Orange. Canna is our next one. Uh, this is a really nice plant. It's actually started from seed uh, versus the tubers, uh, which actually makes it a little bit more disease resistant. Uh, but this is a really nice compact plant, as you can see. Um, it has more basal branching, so you get a full, you know, fuller look to it. Um, it also can be grown in the garden, but also fits nicely in a container. Now with a lot of our cannas uh, in Oklahoma, we can keep these in the ground. Um, and they'll off, they usually survive our winters just fine. If you're growing it in a container though, you might want to uh, dig it up and move it indoors and protect it or somehow mulch or keep that container protected. Uh, this is a sister to an earlier variety called South Pacific Scarlet, uh, but as you can see, this one has a really beautiful bright orange flower. The last one we have is an annual vinca. Uh, this is part of the Mega Bloom series called Polka Dot. Uh, vincas are in general really tough annuals as well. 
Uh, they love and don't mind the heat and humidity at all. In fact, I spent some time down in Houston working in a nursery down there and we sold a lot of these down there. So they're very, very heat and humidity resistant plants. Um, diseases can often be a problem, but this one is supposed to be disease resistant. So that's a huge plus. And if you look at this, plant, uh, this flower on it, this is huge compared to a lot of the other Vinca varieties. So very, very wide. Uh, and this particular variety, of course, has that beautiful white petals with a bright pink center. Now these uh, plants get about 13 to 15 inches high. And again, they're nice and compact and full of flowers all summer long. We've really enjoyed being an All-America Selection Display Garden this year. Um, we plan to do it next year, so we hope you will come and join us uh, next year as well to see what we have. Uh, if you're really interested and you really like these plants, I encourage you to go to the All-America Selection website. Uh, they have many more on there that the, have been chosen over the years. Um, they're great varieties and uh, great plants for your garden. a beautiful iris that's showing off here at OSU's campus that I want to introduce you to. This is Iris Pallida um, cultivar variegata and you can see how it's got its name. Obviously it has this lovely variegated foliage that has more of a yellow and green variegation to it. Um, the plant itself will get to be about two to three feet tall and it's topped with these lovely soft purple flowers in the springtime. Now this iris um, has a yellow beard and is apparent to the tall bearded iris hybrids. The nice thing about this particular one being variegated is when it's done blooming, you still have the foliage to add interest to your garden. But it's also known as a sweet iris and you can tell that by the sweet smell that it has. It almost, some people say, smells like Kool-Aid a little bit. This iris prefers moist, humus, well-drained soil. It can handle uh, some shade, but performs best in full sun. Try this iris in your garden next spring. We've got another Oklahoma proven annual that I want to introduce you to and this is Scavola or also commonly known as Fanflower and it gets its name Fanflower because it really is only half of a flower that looks like a fan. Now it comes also uh, in white and pink but you traditionally see it more in this purple color. It's a great low growing annual um, and works well in containers for that spiller effect as well. And one thing that I like to use it for is a lot of times we might have homestead purple verbena planted in our garden and that blooms in the springtime and is a perennial but once that fades we might still want to have that look of purple low growing and this is a great addition for that reason. Scavola is an annual so it will thrive in our heat. Now it does prefer a moist well-drained soil but can tolerate a drought condition as well. challenging year to garden in Oklahoma and one of those big factors has been the rain. It seems like we've gotten way too much rain at times and then there's been a few weeks where we've been hoping for some rain. We're standing here in our proven winners trial gardens and this might not look like a typical garden. As you can see it maybe is not the traditional pretty lush garden. These trial plots are actually intended to see how plants do in a low maintenance Oklahoma situation. So the plants are planted in plots and they get very minimal inputs. Other than some irrigation initially, there's not much maintenance done to these plants. After we look at these plants throughout the season, we start to evaluate how well they've done. 
considering that there was so much rain, record-breaking rains when these plants were first planted, we can look around here and find some of that were truly hardy in some of the heavy rain conditions as well as some of the heat that we've had. So we're going to evaluate some of these and we want to showcase some that uh, we have seen that really have stood out. The first one here is the scavola. This is a cultivar called World Wind. And what I find really attractive about this particular cultivar is that it's just covered with these blue flowers. It creates a nice carpet of blue color. It's going to maintain a height of about 8 to 12 inches without any maintenance at all. It's great for those garden borders, perhaps along a sidewalk, where you want to just cover and soften the edge of that concrete. Pintas are one of my favorite annuals to plant, and this one is called Sunstar Lavender. This is a series, a new series, that actually will be coming onto the market next season, so be on the lookout for it. Now, a lot of pintas, you might have to deadhead them in order to keep the old seed heads off and to keep encouraging that new growth. This particular one, you will not need to do that. It's going to continue to provide a lot of flowers. In fact, you can see some still coming on. It has continued to provide us with this color all season long, which is a nice addition. In addition to the color that you're going to have in your garden, you're also going to be attracting a lot of butterflies with these plants. Now, Sunstar comes in a range of colors, but this one is called lavender, and you can see it's done really well in both our wet conditions as well as our summer heat. As if anyone needs another excuse to add a salvia into your garden, this one is called Rockin' Blue Suede Shoes Salvia, and it's an annual salvia, which means it's not going to come back next year. You're going to have to replant it but you can just see the size of plant that you get in one season's growth. It gets to be about two to three feet tall. Now we've missed the peak season just slightly on this one. You can see that there are some flowers still as it continues to bloom up that spike. But even after those um, light blue flowers fade and drop off, it leaves behind almost a black calyx. And so that still is gonna give you some color interest in your garden. Now what I find striking about this, especially this late in the season, is the grasshoppers have been ravenous in my personal garden, and I know a lot of our garden plants out here are showing signs that grasshoppers have found them, but if you look at this foliage, it still looks excellent and doesn't seem to um, appeal to those grasshoppers. While the grasshoppers didn't have an appetite for this plant, you can see the pollinators are loving it. We still have plenty of bees all over this plant and butterflies and hummingbirds will enjoy it in the heat of the summer as well. So like I said, this trial garden may not be the prettiest garden, especially this year with our excessive rains that we've had. You can learn a lot from trial gardens by walking through and seeing with minimal input those outstanding plants that you might want to add to your garden. introduce you to another Oklahoma proven and this isn't just one plant this is actually a collection of plants and that is the junipers. Behind us here we have a Taylor juniper. This is Juniperus virginiana which is also the same genus species as our eastern red cedars that we often see growing around Oklahoma. Now this is a, a cultivar called Taylor and it was actually discovered in Taylor, Nebraska. And what really sets it apart from some of the eastern red cedars that we see growing around our state is the fact that this has such a columnar form to it. You can see it stays pretty tight and narrow, only growing a couple of feet wide, but it'll reach a height of about 20 feet. So it's really an ideal plant to kind of punctuate the landscape and it works well in small spaces. Now, there's several junipers that you can add to your garden, and junipers grow anywhere from 20 inches tall to 20 feet tall. One of the most gold foliage junipers that you can add to your garden is one called Saybrook Gold. This juniper gets to be about 30 inches tall, but will have about a six foot wide spread on it. Now, most junipers do well in a range of soils, and they're also pretty drought tolerant once they're established.
There are lots of great horticultural events this time of year. Be sure and consider these activities when you're making your plans for the weeks ahead. Next week, we are back with an all-new episode of Oklahoma Gardening. Casey has tips on creating your own seed starting kits. We plant potatoes from seed. We find out how tips on avoiding winter colds and flu can keep our plants healthy. And we get even more out of our straw bale beds. We're glad to be back in the garden, and we hope you join us next week for more TV You'll Grow to Love. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklamagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shop, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, and the Tulsa Garden Club.